You're listening to Honey, We Made a Disney Podcast. Two friends since before we had internet in our homes, now guides on your nostalgic tour of Disney history, one magical film at a time. I'm Eddie Ferguson. And I'm J.B. Wagner. And on today's episode, we're glad we didn't go to certain parts of Mexico as we review the Three Caballeros. So fasten that safety restraint and pull up on the yellow strap. It's time to open the vault. Cue that disney sound effect. Again, Eddie, the floor is yours if you want to introduce this because (laughs) I have spent very little time in Latin America, very little experience with anything with this. Um, The only setup I will give you is this is another one of the propaganda films as America Mm -hmm. tried to make sure that Latin America didn't become a Nazi in like good stronghold during World War II. But Eddie, tell us more about this. Uh, This is another one of those kind of like series of vignettes. So there's no really, you know, overarching narrative kind of the... The thread that loosely ties everything together is Donald receives this box of gifts. Um, and as he opens them, it kind of sets off this, you know, the, the next set of, of adventures. Um, uh, the first gift, of course, is a projector and screen so he can watch some of these different adventures yep. or whatnot. So we just kind of tick through uh, all of these different um, vignettes. Uh, The first one is entitled The Cold-Blooded Penguin that starts off uh, all the way down in Antarctica or the South Pole as he decides to leave his home for warmer climates and he navigates along the coasts uh, of South America, going to places like Chile and Lima, the capital of Peru, and then, of course, to Quito and Ecuador and then landing and visiting in the Galapagos Islands and all of the uh, cartoon inventive ways that a penguin would travel said different, uh, said, said distance. Is that a, love, a, a decent way of, of? Yeah. Yeah. I love when he puts the um, hot water jugs on his feet and he's just standing there looking at his map and then he sinks straight through the ice that's one of my <laughs> favorite little gags um and it's uh, um i felt like the 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 penguin one is just i mean there's very little cultural stuff i mean there's a little bit i mean he visited the visits the different places and whatnot but for the most part this one is the animators are just having fun it's just kind of like what if we had a penguin who did this and then that and then this and then that? And then you just kind of have these animators just having fun with that. Do you feel well, like that's thre- a proper motivation? It kind of threw me off because I was like, what does this have to do with mm-hmm. uh, with South America? And you, they kind of play into that when they kind of change narrators um, they use uh, the voice of the guy who voices the original Winnie the Pooh and Cough from the Snake and Jungle book. That very iconic, kind of almost sad Sterling voice. Sterling Holloway. Yes, when they go to um, when they go to Antarctica and then they kind of like slowly kind of um, show his, him trying to get uh, to South America. Did it make you want to watch Happy Feet? I know that's a Still personal no. favorite of yours. Still no. Uh, or Surf's Up. Surf's Up. Ne- neither of which I think La- I have actually watched. Really? Nope. There's a lot. I mean, and then you go to the Penguins of Madagascar. I mean, there's oh, a those lot are of animated penguins. Uh, then you get the Penguins of Mary Poppins. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I mean, penguins just lend themselves to be animated. Didn't uh, Happy Feet win like an Academy right? Award or something? Or is nominated something for an like Academy that. Award? Yeah, I mean, it something had Robin, Robin Williams was in it. Um, Elijah Wood. Yeah, it, it pulled in quite the star-studded cast. But So that's how this opens. And then we go on to the Flying Gauchito Um which involves um, a flying donkey. 
Is this a donkey from Pinocchio? Do I exactly that was the thought that I had. I'm like, did one of the boys escape Pleasure Island and yeah. make his way down to Uruguay? Um yeah, I mean, this is a a very intriguing um little segment. <laughs> I don't know what all to say on this one. We really don't have that much to say. It's literally just vignette after vignette yeah. after vignette. Uh the right. the the video he's watching is called Aves Rayas. Right? Does that sound sound mm-hmm. sound something like that? It's called Strange Birds. Um, or rare so birds, ca- yeah. Ooh, they said strange birds. Like they, there was a little. They, they yeah, called so it that, or they the, had like words or something. Yeah, the in Spanish there is no like strange or rare is um, pretty much the the same word. Well, then that um, makes more sense because that's it was less strange than it was uh, interesting birds. Although I don't know how a flying donkey counts. In all of this, but I guess it, I guess, I guess it is, is still a strange (laughs) bird. Um, uh, yeah. So Pablo, the penguin, he definitely stands out the little, I could never understand what they were saying when they called him this, but the, the, like the little bird that was like pop around everywhere and then just like make a, like, like, um, um, all over the place. Like he's like, what they called him. I couldn't figure it out either. Like, what are they actually calling this bird? Um, huh. cause it was like, it, 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 they, they said the name of the bird comes from like the sound that it makes. That's from like the pump, 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 pump bird. <laughs> cause I still don't know <laughs> what it's called, but it's like an iconic, uh, bird from this, um, from this movie. Like that's one of the memorable moments or characters from, from this thing. Um, but yeah, it's just one random thing after another, after another. I will say that when they go to the um, whole bird section in particular, cause you're like, am I watching a bird documentary that has been kind of feels like that, right? Yeah. And then, oh no, there's a flying donkey. Okay. There's, this is taking, is he a bird? A is he a bird too? Turn. No one knows. No one knows. And then wanna... and then it goes off and then it just goes into um uh Bayou, Bayou, Bayou. And then that's all kind of beautiful. Bahia. And Bahia. That's I wrote down the yeah, pronunciation so... and I did horrible with it. <laughs> Bahia. Bahia. Um the well, you have Jose come back. So uh in our last episode oh, saludos, we reviewed amigos, saludos yeah. amigos. And that was when we were introduced to the Jose the Parrot from Brazil, and he comes back in this and luckily stays in the movie all the way to the end. You know, he takes him a while to to pop in here, but he's finally there. And we get a very um yeah, uh um it's kind of like a, a a romantic view of this Brazilian state. Um, you have a famous Brazilian singer, Aurora Miranda, um, who is featured in this as she as she sings um, and later gives um, um, Donald a kiss. Well, I guess the singer portrays the the character and all that, doing all that. So. Um, so yes, you have a return to Brazil, very similar to what we saw in Saludos Amigos. I'm not going to belabor it there. For me, what makes the three Caballeros stand out is we get Mexico, right? Uh, we didn't touch Mexico in Saludos Amigos. So finally we move all the way up, uh, to Mexico, um, where I lived for a number of years. You visited me while I was there. We had grand Mexican adventures. Um, And this is where we are introduced to Panchito, um, who's the rooster. Um, I had to just say, like, as the three line up, I was like, this is definitely Disney of the past. There's no way we would have one animated creature smoking a cigar while the other animated <laughs> creature is shooting off revolvers, it's like guns and smoking. Oh. Yeah. Um, so the what was wonderful about this is you got um, some, yeah, wonderful little introductions into uh, Mexican culture. 
a little bit of Christmas there. It's the beginning of the Christmas season now that we're post Thanksgiving. And uh, this movie uh, has a nice little section in there of the Las Posadas, which is the Mexican tradition of the nine nights before Christmas. You go around the neighborhood and you ask to be let into the houses and people say there's no posada or there's no room or no inn, no shelter. And uh, but there's usually a lot of sweet treats, a lot of punch and Ooh. sweet breads and different things like that that are given out. Um, yeah, posadas. It's good. You, it's like a think progressive dinner. That would probably be the the best way to to think and and to go through all that um, like politically progressive uh, course, is that what you're is that what you're talking about <laughs> no, no. No. don't you remember the progressive dinners i feel like we that our parents did these like our that parents was called Sunday the junk food junket where, eddie <laughs> no that was for us yes that was the junk food junket where we would be driven from one fast food place to the other we're gonna get fries and, here know, then we're gonna get a burger one. here <laughs> yes but I remember my parents doing that where, OK, we would all drive over to this person's house for an appetizer and then this person's house for an entree and this person's house for a dessert or whatever. But I don't know. That was different times. That was the 90s. You know, the 90s. Oh, the 90s. Um, then we get this um, tour of Mexico on the magical sarape, the, the, the Mexican blanket as they are flown around. And um, uh, we get Donald chasing women from the sky and then, you know, <laughs> running after them from on the beaches of, of Acapulco. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's. Yeah, I don't know how to. Um, to Again, something that would what, what just do we even never do be that? made today. Never be made today. Um, just <laughs> Donald full on womanizing. Ogling. I would also like it was a it was very odd. Like wherever is there a beach full of just women? That is there was a not strange. a dude on that beach. Um, yes, I will say, though, here we get one of the first um real integrations of live action and yeah mm -hmm. and animation and and there's a couple of sequences in there that are i mean it's weird what's going on don't get me wrong but just the interaction of live They're action and animation yeah. you tracking with me is very cool it's like wow okay that's pretty advanced to see how they've they've pulled this all off and this is a good yes. you know decade prior to to mary poppins coming out yeah, so they kind of do it in two different ways. Um, at first, they've got what is a little bit more obvious, and maybe that's because we're watching this in HD, and back in the day, they wouldn't have watching it at that high resolution. Um, but uh, the lady's walking in live, and they've like projected the cartoon kind of behind her to make it kind of look like they're both in the same spot. That does that that for me was a little more obvious in what was happening. But then mm -hmm. near the end, they get near the end of that sequence, they flip it um, and uh, they kind of paint Donald and um, uh, Jose onto the onto onto the screen. So it looks a little bit more one for one. Uh, the two of them interact in, interacting um, the the projection. Uh, they would cut back and forth between the projection and uh the animation pieces and you could definitely tell the quality difference uh between the two but yeah i mean mm -hmm. uh even when disney got started he had the whole alice in wonderland um that's kind of some of the initial things that he was doing and she was in a cartoonish world to some degree and of course everybody knows mary poppins is when it was an entire like all of those major awesome sequences with animation and that but yeah you're right this is like another small taste of it um, as he's trying to perfect that um, te technological advancement. Yeah, you see it just kind of uh, pushed along. Um, I don't know if this is the best um, subject matter to try and test that on, but um, <laughs> nonetheless, fighting over go. women. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's like I, I guess I never would have like um, 
you know, women in bikinis on the beach being chased by Donald Duck, like that being a family something, friendly. Something doesn't um, smell right. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, this is a propaganda film. This is trying to get people to love the United States and and not uh, us, Hitler. Mexico. So <laughs> why not? Let's just go for it. Um, the final one is, yeah, really trippy. Uh, this is Donald uh, drunk on love, I guess is the best way to um, to say that. And um, is this wonderful kind of images of 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 Mexico at night and different places around. And you get several different Mexican singers. Dora Luz is in there. Um, uh, and then even um, some different dancing sequences and famous dancers throughout. Um, and then ending with uh, a bit of like you get some Mexican history in here. You understand the significance of the Mexican flag. Like that was what was really odd is like you get these kind of weird trippy sequences and then you get like true history, uh, cultural explanation. Yeah. Yeah. You actually get to learn uh, a bit about uh, the culture and, and different things there. So um, very, very intriguing. Of course, you get the song, the three caballeros, the uh, mostly sang by Panchito and Jose and then Donald just kind of. um um, floating Quack things along. in there, of course, with the um, w- with the original meaning of the word gay, uh, of what it <laughs> used to, to mean, not uh, its current understanding, um, not to be confused of these three men's relationship to each other. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> we all needed that. <laughs> <laughs> It's Christmas season too, right? So we're we're getting it in a, in a couple of Christmas songs. So we get it. Yeah, uh, I do. So had love, you uh, ever seen any of this before? So funny enough, I had several times when I was younger because really, I'm pretty sure my parents taped this off of cable when I was really really young, like maybe even before wow. I was born, because we we evidently had cable before I was born and or early on. <laughs> <laughs> then we got rid of it for most of my life, but we had these VHS tapes of all of these random things taped off of TV. So it would have commercials in it and we'd have to skip through that. But we had the three, co- like a lot of this film, like probably half this film, we had probably right up to the point where all three of them come into the scene. And then from then on, like the, we, then it kind of like the tape ran out or it stopped recording or something. So there was a lot of this film that I remembered. I, I was just, assu- I, in my brain, I remembered it being like just a piece of the film that was like after the movie. But there was a lot of this that I remembered from my childhood. Um, the Penguins um, especially uh, was one of the big ones that I, re- I remembered. Um, but the tooth comb guy, that one, I feel like I remembered that. The guy who's like playing something with with his teeth. Like, ling, 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 ling. like it's like a banjo, but like playing with his teeth and it's like a pick or something like that. Um, but funny enough, Eddie, I did. Did you, did you watch this as a kid or do you remember, or is this your first time watching it? I I remember seeing, uh, definitely pieces of this here and there. I, I can't recall like actually seeing it all together until Disney yeah. plus actually came out with it. Um, but of course, I mean, there's several segments in this that are, um, that are really well known, like the three caballeros um, in particular, you know, they're kind of like stance together. And then um, you have uh, the sequences of them flying around on the carpet. Um, you know, I, I've seen that, of course, here, there and, and everywhere that kind of gets included in, in a lot of different stuff. But uh, overall, no, it's kind of newer to me. Uh, I didn't I didn't grow up with this. Um, like you've described. The real question is, Eddie, have you watched Legend of the Three Caballeros on Disney Plus? Yeah, this was I've watched. Uh, I think I, I think we watched the first episode. Have you watched it? We've watched a lot of it and we keep watching the same. They keep on restarting it at the beginning of the series oh. and not like watching all of it. It's so trippy and nothing 
like this movie because it is well one it has an actual somewhat of a storyline and bad people it's a <laughs> plot uh, but it's like this like um greek goddess has like been frozen in time and the the three caballeros get a magic atlas that this other billionaire is trying to get from them and they're going back in time and all over the world to like stop him from trying to like get power it's the weirdest show and my kids love it it's just it's just it's like a world trekking trip of a, of a show huh. with like special powers and they somehow always foil him in the end and then it's the next episode he's trying to do like he makes Stonehenge come alive as like walking around things um he goes to all like there's it's weird it's like mystical and magical it's just the weirdest thing yeah it's a weird show i don't know how they got from this movie to that series to that. no idea i i mean i um yeah i'll have to give it another try um i watched like the first episode with lewis and it just didn't click it just didn't hold um, but that was a while ago, so maybe we'll try trippy. this again and see we see what happens um, with this. I w- well, what I was checking was um, I'd been trying to find. Uh, so there's a documentary you're referencing, like other things that have been on um, Disney Plus in, in relation to this. Um, and there's apparently a documentary. I have not been able to watch this yet because it's not available on the Disney Plus on my end so i got to use you know the old vpn and it is that's what i was just double checking it is available in the united states there's a documentary called walt and el guapo that is apparently a documentary film about the making of saludos amigos and the three caballeros how i didn't know about this (laughs) which saludos amigos starts off with the making it was of a kind of a documentary, <laughs> uh, but I think this is more of a documentary, of just kind of like all about Walt Disney's government-sponsored trip and kind of what is the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I'll have to give this a look. Um, it's just kind of a last-minute notice of of things here, um, but yeah, Walt and El Guapo: The Untold Adventures. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but I would be interesting. I, I I think that's what is so fascinating uh with this and with with Saludos Amigos. We referenced it in that episode of just how influential these really were. I mean, it's it's hard we can be cheeky about it, you know, this side of of history and kind of look back on these different things, but it actually had a significant impact in being kind of a goodwill ambassador, a propaganda, propaganda is not always bad, um, of saying, you know, like, Hey, let's, let's remain friends. Let's, let's make art together and and be friends and not go to war with each other. Um, you know, these things had the, these films had uh, a significant impact on it all. Um, and I think it, it highlights well Disney of this era, um, you know, when we think back on Disney animation, it's real easy for us to think back on these big tentpole moments, the big animated features, Snow White, Dumbo, uh, Pinocchio, moving forward with Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty. But it's important to remember, like, no, like Disney became who they were because of shorts and for a big long run there, like that's all they could do. You know, they couldn't um, put together some of these bigger pieces and that was used significantly for um, the advancement of, of American causes during world war II, which I think is, is fascinating. Uh, is there any representation in the parks for the three caballeros? There's a lot. There's a lot. It's really quite surprising. Um, you will find these characters. You can actually meet them in different areas. Uh, often, uh, Donald will come out just kind of in more of his, um, his sombrero type outfit, but specifically 
uh, the kind of the most intense representation. Um, if you remember a few years ago, they went back into It's a Small World at Disneyland and kind of sprinkled the Disney characters in the different areas. Yeah, added Nemo. Uh, in, they added the three caballeros in the Mexico section of, of uh, It's a Small World there in Disneyland. Uh, so that's its most significant representation at Disneyland. Uh, at Disney World, you have big representation in two resorts and the all-star music resorts you've actually got a a pool like a three caballeros pool with their statue like in the center of the pool and there's like water coming out of jose's pistols Mm. um like it's like it's a pretty big like centerpiece uh of that particular resort um and similarly so um for coronado springs resort there at disney world um they've got another kind of pool area with a big statue but by far the biggest representation is they have their own ride there is the three caballeros ride at the mexico pavilion in epcot so when the uh mexico pavilion opened uh, with Epcot in 1982, which is by far my favorite pavilion in in Epcot. Um, it's beautiful. You like go in through the this pyramid and you go inside this giant show building and you're actually in Mexico, like a little Socolo area at night. It's just beautiful. Um, like volcano in the distance or uh, like, um low lighted uh, uh, restaurant right there at water's edge. And when it opened, they had a, um, a little boat ride called the river of time. And it just kind of walked through the history of Mexico that back in 2008. So, I mean, not like recently, but fairly recently, right? Like 2008, we were still in college. That wasn't too long ago. We're talking 15 yep. years ago, maybe 16 years ago, um, they rethemed that ride to the three caballeros. It's now called the Grand Fiesta Tour of the Three Caballeros. So, like, this has had enough of a staying, uh, uh, or at least the idea of the three caballeros and the song and everything, that in 2008 they rethemed a ride at Epcot to be based wow. around the. Um, the three caballeros so that whole sequence of them like flying on the carpet and seeing different uh areas of mexico minus donald chasing women on the beach that is the (laughs) idea of this ride like the uh jose and panchito can't find um donald and so you're like with him flying around mexico trying to find him very very cute it is uh for us a must ride anytime we are in epcot um, and, uh, so yeah, like it's actually got pretty significant representation saying it's got its own ride at Walt Disney world. And there are other films that don't even have any representation whatsoever in the parks that we've talked about on, on here before. Right. Um, was it Dumbo or ba- no Bam- Bambi? Is that what we said? <coughs> doesn't, doesn't yeah, currently Bam- have any, Bambi any has any- no significant yeah because all of the and other ones Saludos, Amigos, have so a much, ride yeah. or um they have a ride or they have a restaurant or that you know they've got some strong reference even song of the south up until recently had representation up until recently. in the parks well the, it still does um splash mountain in tokyo disneyland is not going anywhere which a plug for our next episode, which is when we will talk a little bit about (gasps) song of the South, because we might've found some, some of it online. (laughs) That's about the only place you can get. Don't say it. Don't say it. Disney will pull it before we can. Cause you know, Disney's listening to this. They're always listening to everything. JB, it is time for our reaction, our rating. We, uh, for those of you, uh, uh, playing along at home, we have our one to five, one meaning back in the vault, two, eh, interesting, three, entertaining, four, classic, five, essential. JB, what do you rate the three caballeros? 
gonna break your heart, Eddie. I'm gonna you nudge gonna this back. back. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put put it back in the vault. It just it's just so hard for me to get emotionally invested in a tourism video. So it's just a little too it's a little too and especially when it starts off it's as really a nature. It it's like a nature tourism video that then becomes just a straight tourism video. I had this on a side screen while doing work and was just like occasionally just skipping through stuff cuz um I was I was not engaged whatsoever. So I'm sorry, thank you for your time. It's not a slam the door. It's just like ushering grandma back into her room. It's just like, yeah, that's just, we're just, it's time to go back to bed. Um, I, I would be inclined to, to agree with you. I mean, it is sticky at times. Um, but I think it's got a strong enough, um, presence in the parks. Um, and of course, which you weigh, I also which you do. weigh weighs heavily for you. Weighs heavily for me. That, that, that's indeed, a lot of that's a big evidence. Yeah. And then um, I would also say, like eh, it, 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 it is you know my Mexico there. You know, there, I, I enjoyed it. You're so partial. I'm I'm gonna be gracious and say to it's interesting. I think everybody should watch it once. You know, and just kind of like oh okay. And we wouldn't say that about everything. There are definitely some things that you never need to watch. So, no, and that's exactly what we said about Bambi. I was like, "Yeah, Bambi can go right back in the vault. I no <laughs> one needs to see this. I don't. I don't get why this was ever made." I, I will make one last comment on this. There was definitely some sequences, in, more so in this, I felt, but also in Saludos Amigos, um, or the little Fantasia vibes, right? Where it's just yep. like, mm-hmm. let's just. Triple E animate to music. And I'm like, okay, guys, I think we've done that. Let's move on. Let's uh let's tell some stories now. So a back okay. in the vault for JB, uh an interesting for me for the three caballeros. Well, now that we've finished that and we filled you up on nostalgia now it's time for a bit of new Disney news and Eddie. Just a bit. Y- you went and we both saw Wish this weekend or this this past week opening weekend, which we is not a norm anymore. We don't always go see the newest um, Disney films that come out because, frankly, a lot of them suck. Um, how was it? How was it for you taking the whole family? Did you get to see a English? This was our question as a family: was was it an English version with, with Spanish subtitles or a Spanish version with English subtitles? Ah, great question. Um, So typically, any kids' movies are presented here uh, dubbed. Um, So, you know, everything would be just like it was fully in Spanish. Um, But every once in a while, they will put out a few showings in English. And I had been watching for like two weeks to see, are they going to (laughs) do an English one in this? Are they? Are they? And I was tracking and tracking and they did not put it out there until like Wednesday night. I did not know. And um, the only showing like it that was it was like five o'clock at, in the evening in English oh, happened to be at our closest movie theater. Um, I was oh, thinking like, oh, no, we're going to have to drive into the city or something crazy like that. Uh, but no, it was like our closest movie theater. So it's like Eddie. perfect for us. They knew it. They knew it. Um, so we attempted the crazy. This was like a huge gamble. We took everybody uh, wow. from our two-year-old and our three-year-old uh, who had never been to the movies before. Uh, and we had no idea how they were going to react to this. So we came armed with sweet treats and goodies <laughs> um, just oh, in yeah, case, you, you know. But they... They uh, thoroughly enjoyed the movie going experience. Um, our youngest, who's two, often, I mean, he comes and he goes, I watch TV, I watch TV. And at the theater, he goes, I watch big TV, I watch big TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So that is uh, our, our, one of our favorite lines um, from, from going to it all. Um, so yeah, we, we saw it all. Sent you a picture. 
When did you guys get to go see it? Uh, so we went on Saturday. Okay. Took, took, took both my son and my daughter at the same time. This is our first co co movie to see together. But anyways, did you, do we want to actually review this film to some degree or give people a taste or at least our reactions to it? Um, I, I was planning on it. I was, I was, I was gearing up for it. Um, I, I will start by saying, um, my kids enjoyed it. Like my, um, yeah. uh, they, they were thoroughly hooked and enjoyed it all. Um, I think Asa made it until about like the last 10 minutes, you know, yeah. and then I was just kind of starting to get a little, a little restless. Luckily we were the only people in the theater. So we just, we didn't care. We just kind of, um, but our kids thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and I will also say like, for the most part, I enjoyed it as well. Like I thought like, okay, this is, this is a decent movie. Um, I think the, my overarching, um, uh reaction has just been kind of like yeah i'm i'm not blown away by this at all i know there's been a lot of like uh vehement reaction like against it and i'm like eh, i don't know if i'm ready to be like this is the worst disney movie ever made no 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 um uh, it was just very mediocre i would say it had some entertaining moments um Definitely had its its weak parts. Um, I, honestly, here's the best way that I think I can summarize this. I feel like they fed a few key Disney prompts into chat GTP <laughs> and AI. And AI wrote, wrote this script. Because there's that. just moments where you're like, okay, I see what you're doing. Like you're hitting... These certain beats. Oh, we've got these cute little nods. allusions to yeah, nods to Disney movies of the past. Okay, that's cute. But like, I never cared about these characters at all. Um, the stakes weren't real. The motivations were non-existent for for any of them, especially for the for the villain. Um, the songs just felt like some. Hey, we want, uh, you know, the family Madrigal, but in this version and, you know, we want, uh, you know, this, you know, it, it just, uh, it was definite allusions to like other Disney songs that had been a hit. Like, Hey, we want a, you know, you're welcome kind of style song here. And, <laughs> you know, we want, and it just, do, does that make sense? That's why I kind of like to go back and I'm like, did they just feed this through AI? Like, was this the first AI generated <laughs> script? It definitely, <clears throat> it felt like it was trying to be, um, cause they made this for the Disney 100. Like that's why they didn't even mm -hmm. contemplate pushing this out of this year, even with the strike, um, because that's what it was for. And even put it, having, um, Jennifer Lee, uh, who runs Disney Animation Creative, right? Mm -hmm. She's the creative director of, of Disney Animation. Chief creative officer. Chief creative yeah. officer. Um, she did Frozen, um, obviously. Uh, and uh, putting her behind this project, I think, was a, was a big decision for I, in the importance of it. But there was, the, you're right, the story itself was not that compelling to me. Um, even the setup for it of just like the wishing star, but they voluntarily give up their wishes felt a little odd and unrealistic yeah. to me. Um, just from the motivation that you kind of talked about. Um, and he's doing it to, to, um, protect people's wishes because something happened with the torn, uh, the the torn fabric Tapestry. that's in his office but we don't ever get the full do we ever did we ever get the yeah. full story no. of what happened no no so that that could have added more dimension and it didn't uh the the homages you're right like they felt like we're just throwing these in there like she's at a well when something happens and they make her the fairy godmother at the end which felt so weird and unnerving so like, why weird. did we do this that's not her yeah. dream or whatever 
But by far the lowest moment of this film is what do all of us have in common? And these are yes. animals talking to them and they're looking at her like you're an idiot. Cause you don't understand what we all have in common. And she's like, what, what do we all have in common? And I'm as an audience member going, what do they all have in common? I obviously don't know either. And they're like, you're we're all stars. And I was like, Oh dear God, what is happening no, right now? And no. that's when it brought me back to some of the worst moments of frozen Two where she is her own um, answer to the voice she's calling herself into sure. the fro- like, And then I was like, oh, wait, this is Jennifer Lee. Same director, writer. This is the same. Like, we're all stars in this. Like, it's that same general, like, aloof message that is still hard to pin down. Like, wait, what are we, what are we actually saying here? This is doesn't seem quite right. Like no, like concrete thing of like love, bravery, courage, like friendship, like reconcile. No, it's you're a star. Doesn't just doesn't. Oh. So that's where it feels like it just fell flat. Yes. My kids enjoyed it because it's a Disney movie and it's on the big yes. screen and it's got music, but even the music, I can't remember a single song from that except for the song that's been in all the trailers and stuff like that that's the only one that i can remember from it i can remember the songs because my kids want to listen to it we are no eddie just say no and i know that the songs just don't hold up because like i mean when encanto came out like we listened to encanto non-stop right it was great and it it took me a long time to get sick and tired of of encanto songs like a couple of months, to be honest with you. This, like we're two, three days into listen to this and I'm just like, nope. no, I can't do this anymore. I mean, there's a couple, I, I do want to like, I don't want to cast this like too strong. Um, knowing oh, what I know okay. now, the knowing what I know now song, kind of the ensemble where they all decide to like work together. Um I think that has some really beautiful melodies and and really cool moments in that. Um, I don't think that's as as bad. Um, the at all cost song. Sarah and I have talked at length about this song because it's actually like a hauntingly beautiful lullaby. Uh, but when it's place in the movie, like them like holding on to these wish orb things and. It gets really creepy. It's just like, I don't get that. You know, I don't understand this like narratively. But if you just pull that song out on its own and you listen to it, it's actually quite beautiful. Like it's actually quite. um, uh, Yeah, I mean, Chris Pine's got uh, an amazing voice. Of course, Ariana DeBose has an incredible voice. And all of the songs kind of have those moments where you, you can just enjoy their artistry. But overall, like the songs are just they're. They're not good Disney songs. They're like uh, bubblegum pop at times, you know, and they got like a pop star to write all of these songs. So it, I guess that kind of makes sense in all of this. There's also like, I'm just really tired of, um, you know, you, you listen back to some of the um, Howard uh, Ashman songs and the lyrics are just incredible. The way that he can do, you know, narrative storytelling with just, such articulate um, um, lyrics. You know, you go back to like Bonjour um, from the opening of Beauty and the Beast and it's just incredible where he sets the stage. We get so much exposition, but you don't realize you're getting exposition. And then we get something like Welcome to Roses, which is like trudging through the exposition. And the we're not even trying to be creative in our lyrical selection. We're just like, you know, like, let's just cram in it, you know, like, this is now this style, like, Lin-Manuel Miranda has done it a lot, oh, and like, yeah. he can do it, he can do it well, but at the same time, like, it's definitely gets overused, and then it gets it was overused a and done poorly. It was a Kmart poorly. version of Lin-Manuel Yeah, Miranda. yes, yes, it's a Kmart version, or it's just kind of like, you're not rhyming or or really putting any melody to this, there's just like this quick speak with music in the background and we just cram in a whole bunch of words and it, you know, it fills in this exposition. And, and for me, like, that's just like, 
I don't want to like listen to that. That's just um, does that make sense or am I just rambling? Yes. No, I agree with you, although you are definitely more attuned to the musical melody, all of those kinds of things more than I am. The thing that they did differently or tried to do differently than all of their more recent films is trying to make this 2D style um, yeah. illus- uh, illu- like w- animation work. And from the first time I saw the first trailer through actually watching the film, I still don't get why people like the look of it. It felt cheap to me the whole time. It just felt blah, like almost like a Christian animated film was being made. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just, um, that's what it felt like to me. Oh, I think uh, yeah, I'm not going to go back and listen, but we at one time reacted to the, the, trailer. the trailer. And I think when the first, you know, when the trailer first came out, everything, I was kind of excited. I was like, okay, this is something new. I was kind of getting a little tired of uh, a bit of the more kind of plasticky 3D animation look. So I'm like, okay, we're trying something different. And I was excited. And I mean, there were some sequences in this that I I enjoyed. But, like? Um, <laughs> I can't think of any. I can't think of any that I was like, oh, that was really cool. Or that was really beautiful. Like, Yeah. I, mm. For me, I guess what just kept throwing me. I, I liked the end sequence, like the the final, the act three of this movie was by far the most entertaining for me. You know, the sequence where they're actually like trying to defeat Magnifico, like, OK, I, that was that was entertaining. And I thought that had some cool visual aspects to it. Uh, but overall, yeah, it just felt weird. I think the way you described it was well um and tell me if I'm wrong, like, am, were my eyes like playing tricks with me? It felt like like the almost like the frame rate was off. Like there was like these weird like skips in the animation. Does that make sense? Like it didn't feel fluid yeah. because of this art style. Yep. There's times where it would be like very abrupt in some in some of the movements and stuff. Do, do you think they saw... Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse or Puss in Boots and, and saw like what need to do something three, different. We, yeah, because I mean, both of those have begun to really lean into the stylized 3D animation. Um, I wonder if they just felt influenced like, OK, we got to do this or I think, hey, let's make it feel storybook. This is our hundred, you know, celebration. Yeah, I think it was more of that. Like they're like, this is the hundred celebration. Let's do an ode back to all of the other hand drawn uh, animation styles and try to make it still 3D, but in that kind of world. Um, again, it just speaks to they were trying to do way too many things with this and didn't spend enough time with the core story story and really making that come characters <laughs> yeah everything that we complain about it this is the movie for that and that's what and people knew it and didn't show up at the box box office because it only made uh 19 million dollars in the 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 normal three day friday saturday sunday window it did make close to about 31 counting the thanksgiving day and th- and black Full friday day, yeah um, but trolls the previous weekend made 30 million in just the three days it was out there. And frankly, even though my kids enjoyed this film, I took my daughter to see the trolls movie because she really wanted to see it. She was glued from the moment all the way through the end, did not like it's the most focus I've ever seen her in my life. This movie she enjoyed, but she was still occasionally like getting up and kind of looking around and um kind of like like in and out of the of the film. Um, she th- compared to trolls and trolls. I had a lot more emotional, even though it's a silly movie. Like I was a lot more emotionally uh, engaged with that film than I was with this film. But yeah, nineteen million. I mean, it's no twelve million like uh like their film last year around this time made. But man, that's yeah. that's bad. I I wonder it in some ways is Disney. Uh, well, and I actually just before we got on here, sent you an article from Variety about this of just in many ways, uh, Disney is the um, is um, the subject of like their own demise. Like we have we have come to expect 
such high standards that it's almost yeah. like now like it's it's almost impossible for Disney to hit that. Um and they definitely have not um been trying to hit that. You know like they've they've put in some you know, and, and all of their categories, some films that just like, I'm sorry, you know, like uh, Turning Red is not a, a typical Pixar one that you you look for. Like the Marvel's not a, you know, a Marvel movie, you know, like you just keep hitting all of these different things where you're going, you're, you, you, you did so good for so long that you've trained your fans to expect something and then yeah. you don't deliver it on it. I mean, sure, it's partly us as the fans. We've got too high of expectations. It's it's just a movie. Like, at the end of the day, I would do it all over again. I loved going with my whole family. Like, it was a beautiful, like, end to the Thanksgiving um, day for us. Like, it was just, we had fun as a family. But I think yeah. no matter what movie you put up there, we would have had fun. Uh, I wish it was a, you know, a more compelling, like, um, you know, I, I went away going, man, I, I, I wish they'd put like Encanto back in the, in the theaters. I, I never got to see Encanto <laughs> in the theaters. Like that would have been, that would have been really great or interesting, but maybe Frozen 3 will be that or, or the newly announced <laughs> Frozen 4, um, that, uh, Iger announced while he opened the brand new, uh, Frozen, the world of Frozen out at Hong Kong Disneyland, which looks amazing. I don't know if you've seen videos of this place. Like, oh, yeah. Whoa. Like, may have to buy some plane tickets to Hong Kong to see that type of, of level. Like, incredible. But two more Frozen films. I mean, it's inevitable. It was I inevitable. We were going I to enjoyed get Frozen this. 2. I, 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 I'm more like the music in Frozen 2, especially, but. Uh, I really enjoyed Frozen 2. I don't know. And we're getting a Toy Story 5. It just feels like, are they going to learn their lesson? Tim Allen. Like, Tim Allen's Toy Story 5. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> he, he, had a, he had an idea for them, and now they're listening. Yeah. So, it's all interesting. I'm, I'm still rooting for him. I, uh, I'm hopeful. Um, that's why we do this podcast, because we're still I rooting for Disney. That's why we do this, Ben. Because we are, we are rooting, we are rooting for it, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. Well, before we go, JB, I hope you and your family have a good week. Maybe watch some more troll movies just to lighten things up a bit. I hope so too. Yep, yeah, it was a very interesting week because, uh. Like I said, took my daughter to see Trolls movie. That was on Wednesday. We had just gotten back from a uh, trip to Texas. And so we waited till after that trip to kind of go see the Trolls movie. But then realizing, wait, content for this podcast, I probably need to go <laughs> see the Wish movie too. So that's when I reached out like, hey, Eddie, are you actually going to go see it? Maybe slightly hoping you were going to wait a week. And then we were like, we're here at the theater. I was like, oh, I need to go see this now. And <laughs> my daughter also kind of wanted to watch that as well. And last minute as we're about to leave, I'm like, hey, buddy, my son, do you, you want to go? Want to go see Wish? And he was like, sure. I was like, okay, two kids at one theater. We'll see how it here goes. Go. And it was honestly pretty, it was honestly pretty good. Um, the best, the best hack though that, I, that I've, 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 figured out now is so we buy the um annual bucket the popcorn bucket where it's like five dollars uh 550 or something like that for every time you go and it's a massive bucket um so with my son uh or my daughter for that matter we would just get it and then we would they would uh, they i'd be like hey can i get something to put some of it in that so we're not having to share the bucket together um, uh, something they can hold and they gave, uh, they keep on giving us this little tiny sleeve of paper to fit in a little bit of popcorn and it's annoying. So I was like, I got both of them. This is, I'm not want to do this. So I went and I was trying to figure out what can I use for this? And I was going to get like the gallon bags, like Ziploc bags. And then my wife was like, why don't you just use the thanks, the Halloween buckets? 
like the, the <laughs> classic Halloween buckets, which are kind of similar yeah. size. So we go, I'm like, well, maybe let's try it out. So I grab them and we go and instantly I'm like, this is a great, just because they can hold them themselves, like with the little straps and right. stuff. And so then we go up, I pay for it. And the guy, and the guy's like a teenager or something. And he just looks at me and he's like, Hey man, do you want me to go ahead and give you a refill now and fill up your kids' buckets? And I was just like, yes. yes. So he literally filled mine up, <laughs> which I paid for. Then we got our free refill and he literally took the buckets and filled up both of them. And I was like, this is the best customer service I've Thank ever you. gotten. Thank you. How yes. is this even possible? And because it was you have then. the annual bucket. You have the annual bucket. They know you're here a lot. This is like... Mm -hmm. They're getting your money and yep. they're going to get more of it because they were really cool about it. Oh, yeah. And now I'm telling everybody about like, hey, I actually got code customer service from an AMC with teenagers running behind it. I don't know. This kid's parents are a gem. Thank you for making, for <laughs> raising this child, whatever. But yeah, so that was oh, our man. first time going to now theater I'm, with two kids. So. Now I'm craving theater popcorn. I love theater little bit. popcorn. Just so good. So good. Well, with that, you've got a weekly dose of Disney nostalgia. Be sure to subscribe to Honey, We Made a Disney Podcast wherever you listen to your other favorite podcast, and give us a look on YouTube as well. While you're there, please like or leave a five-star review and share it with your best friend. You can also check us out at honeywemade.com where you can see all our nostalgic reviews of Disney movies. Tune in next week as we pirate a copy of and try to review a little bit of Song of the South. Thank you for listening. And remember, a new day's waiting to start. You must see it, wake up, and greet it. <laughs>